to uh, present uh, my panel project for educational leadership uh, 6301 adult learning at Lamar University for 2013. Uh, my presentation is about chapter 7 uh, from our book, textbook, Experiential Learning. So uh, first of all, I would like to state the quote from uh, John Dewey. Uh, Experiential learning takes place when a person involved in an activity looks back and evaluates it and determines what was used uh, and which is useful, important to remember and then uses this information to perform another activity. The reason I pick uh, experiential learning is uh, because I believe that uh, we utilize experiential learning a lot. So uh, experiential learning uh, is related to reflection, so which I uh, referred uh, from both. Uh, reflection is an important human activity in which people recapture their experience, think about it, uh, move over, evaluate it, it is uh, these things uh, will, will be working the experience that is important to learning. Uh, this is another uh, reflection uh, definition. It's from Tate. Uh, we learn through critical reflection by putting ourselves into the experience, exploring personal theoretical knowledge to understand it, uh, view it in a different way. For instance, I uh, this is my presentation, so I would like to review it uh, and then get a feedback and then. Uh, I will be utilizing that new information and then I will experience it and uh, I will utilize uh, this information for my uh, dissertation for instance. The reflection informal and uh, uh, formal. Informal reflection uh, involves self-questioning, develops our awareness of our own assumptions. This is uh, informal and then formal would be draws, uh, draws from research and theory, provides guidance and frameworks uh, for, our, uh, for the practice. So the experiential learning, uh, with the knowledge is continuously created through the transformation of experiences that I was trying to explain about my dissertation. Learning occurs through action or reflection. Uh, new experiences must be integrated with past experiences through ongoing reflection for through experiential learning uh, to occur. So we, what it means is, uh, in order for you to experience something, you need to take actions, uh, on ongoing reflection through the new activities. So uh, the guru, uh, John Dewey, uh, in 1938, the first uh, reflection or expansion learning. So we, what he says about the model, uh, first we need to identify a problem that is uh, perplexing, that is felt. We observe, we find the identified problem to create a fuller understanding, fuller understanding. We develop a hypo hypothesis or understanding about the problem, its origins and possible solutions. We subject the hypothesis to, to, to scrutiny and reasoning. We test the hypothesis about understanding in practice. So what it means is, for instance, uh, I'm going to get uh, your feedback about my uh, uh, my presentation. So if there's a problem, so I will revise it, and then uh, I will put in the hypothesis, and then I will model it. So this is from old, uh, how would I say, expansion learning model. And then recently called the learning cycle for expansion learning. Uh, he said, like, we, we have a like, concrete experience, uh, the event, the reflective uh, observation. We consider what has uh, happened from a variety of perspectives on filling the group. Uh, we can say, for instance, uh, uh, fishbone analysis, brainstorming, all these things to understand what really happened. Then we uh, go through abstract uh, conceptualization. Uh, uh, we repackage and process our uh, own reflections into theoretical understanding. So, uh, First, we know what happened, and then we try to, as uh, Dewey mentioned, uh, we need to uh, utilize the theory and practice. Uh, we and then we active experimentation out with the, this new understanding. Uh, we do it in a different way. So we understand our problem, and then uh, we model it. And we utilize the uh, contemporary theory and understanding, and then we experiment it again. And then uh, again in 1985, uh, both. Uh, uh, David Bond uh, suggests uh, we need to return to an event incident experience or, uh, and record it, uh, considered it in detail at an emotional and cognitive level. We evaluate the uh, event in the light of experience, knowledge, and experimentation to seek to understand the meaning of the experience, plan uh, for what you might uh, change. So if there is a problem in the, uh, the experience uh, or the event that you had, then you need to uh, improve it. The reason I like this uh, topic, expansion model, uh, is I'm an engineer. I have uh, both bas uh, bachelor's and master's in engineering. So what I feel is if there's a problem occurs, so we need to improve, we need to find a way to fix the problem. So we, what it means is that we learn, uh, we experience it, and then we uh, remodel it, and then we put it into practice. 
Uh, so what, uh, there are some barriers definitely to experiential model or uh, reflection. Uh, practical uh, barriers that is suggested by David Cole. Uh, he's, uh, as far as I know, he's a professor at Case Western University right now. So uh, he says, like, sees that uh, to reflect effectively on your experience, uh, you should actively set aside part of your working day to reflect and analyze. So if I, if for instance, if I'm in an uh, old institution, what I meant by old is like, if I am working in an institution for 15 years, I may not grasp the issues right away. So I need to uh, look in a different perspective. For instance, in order for you to understand, if you uh, are appointed to a new position, so you start criticizing, not criticizing, putting some new, uh, new feedbacks uh, about your new position. Barriers to reflection, uh, psychological barriers, uh, fear of judgment, fear of criticism, uh, being close to uh, feedback, defensiveness, and professional arrogance. Bridges to reflection, it should be non-judgmental, uh, uh, support we need to have a mentor or manager. Feeling should be safe enough, uh, a role model, a mentor would be great. So in order for you to experience and then get a reflection, uh, you should definitely have a mentor who will guide you that you don't feel offended, uh, that we have the barrier about reflection. Now we talk uh, as many methods as possible, as many opportunities as possible for engaging in reflection. Time and energy, so you need to have the time and energy to do the uh, experiential uh, learning. Reflection and experience enable us to be conscious about our potential for bias and discrimination, make the best use of the knowledge and available, challenge, develop uh, the existing professional knowledge base, avoid the uh, past mistakes so that it will be an experience for a new uh, uh, learning, maximize our own opportunities for learning. And uh, uh, unless we make conscious and systematic efforts to critique our own practice, we will be un unaware of uh, what happened and then why it happened. Uh, we will not make use of the knowledge base developed by our own profession. We will continue to repeat the same mistakes and then our skills will uh, stagnate rather than it will develop. So uh, I, I was uh, checking uh, about uh, the expansion learning. Uh, there's a uh, 4-H youth uh, program, you can search 4-H.org, that they, uh, uh, how would I say, gr uh, group uh, this uh, model in five steps. The first one is experience, then the stay, the share, then we process it, then we generalize it, then we apply, and then it becomes an uh, experience. What it means is in simply the experience model, uh, we have the key objectives here, so we have the experience, which means the activity that we perform and do it, then we uh, share, then we process with others on what happened, and then we come to the apply process. In this apply process, what happens, we generalize what happened by discussing other people, and then when we generalize uh, what, the, what the issue is and then what solution would be, we experience it, and then we apply it to uh, the new way, and then it becomes again uh, an experience. So we go back to the original way, and then it, the cycle will continue. So this is the original model as you can uh, see. So we, uh, the activity, do it, what happened, why, what is it important, so what, and then now what, and then we will do it, and then it, the cycle will continue. So uh, in the share model, what did you do? So these are the questions that we asked uh, to improve our learning, the experience. What did you do? How did you feel? What did you notice? And then in the process uh, stage, so it is again open-ended questions, and then generalize, uh, so what happened? And then in the applied process, now what? So that it's gonna be a new experience. And then we can utilize expansion learning in, uh, in different ways, again, for internships, for uh, education leaders, service learning, practical travel and field study, and cooperative education. As uh, our roles in, as educators organize and facilitate experience that will ultimately lead to students' meaningful learning. That's really important. So in my class, if I see that a student is not learning in that way, I experience it, I need to find a way that I share with other teachers if it is necessary, that I will develop my uh, way and then I will apply it and then it will be an experience. Preparing graduates to critically analyze, transfer, and apply knowledge and skills to real life uh, situations, uh, and I would say skills. Create experiences that will lead to educational goals through hands on and active learning, reflective thinking, and shared communication. And then, recently, the postmodern view is uh, from Arsha Bryant and Johnston from 1997. The first uh, uh, paper was published in 1996, and then it, it, it became like a book in 1997. So they uh, said our life is uh, in two continua from autonomy to application, uh, adaptation, application to expression, 
So we have uh, in this in this uh, quadrant uh, we have life, uh, lifestyle practices, critical practices, vocational practices, and professional practices. What they suggest uh, these are lifestyle practices uh, help learner interpret and open up new experience. Vocational practices help learner use experience to adapt uh, to changing in marketplace. Confessional practices help learner realize self. Uh, in this practice, we, uh, we try to adopt the dominant socioeconomic environment and critical practices help learner find and exercise voice in service of empowerment through self and social transformation. So this is again the recent uh, expansion learning. So as we can see here, the recent topic was covered uh, and used in 1997, and then we need to, I think, uh, as a, a doctoral program, we need to come up with a new expansion model that uh, will uh, continue, because it was from 1997 again. And then these are all references that I'm gonna post on uh, Blackboard, and then I will uh, finish uh, with a quote again that I love uh, about expansion learning to me, is I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I, I understand. So I do and I understand means like I do something and then I learn what the mistake is, what happened, and then I will discuss with my friends, uh, my mentor, and etc. as suggested by uh, David Cole. Then it becomes a new experience and then uh, we will continue uh, and then improve our skills. That's it. Uh, thanks for listening.